بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to another series of Islam the way of life for exclusively for Iqra Bangla. I am back. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat. I've got another few, um, quite a few weeks, maybe a dozen weeks again of a series of having amazing young guests with me here on Iqra Bangla to look at Islam and see the very simple sides of life. So I, I welcome you guys on this amazing um, second set of uh, series journey with us and I'm going to welcome my new guest this time as well. So thank you for all of those that tuned in the last series that we had and those are messages that we received on WhatsApp and the emails. Thank you very much. They were very encouraging and we want you to keep it up. So see across the screen, you will see the WhatsApp number coming up and you'll see our email. Send us your comments, send us your, um, send us your views, send us something interesting to talk about. Send us your own participation that you would like to come in one day and we can accommodate you here, inshallah. But enough of that, enough of me. I, I have got a new set of guests and I'm really looking forward to introducing them. So I'm now going to look over to my far side. I have a young lady there who I'd like her to do salam to you, introduce herself. So young lady, when you're ready, give salam, everyone salam, tell us your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kyra and I am nine years old. MashaAllah, we have Kyra who is nine years old. And the young lady next to her, when you're ready, give everyone a salam, say your name and how old you are. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khadija and I am seven years old. MashaAllah. So I have Kyra and Khadija with me this time round, inshallah. And they are both sisters. Are you both sisters, am I right? Yes. Brilliant. And you guys at home, there's an opportunity for two sisters, two brothers, or either all to come together, inshallah, just as these guys are. And these guys were watching our show, our series last time. So I'm just going to have a quick talk with them about it. Um, let me come over to you, Khadija. Did you like our last series? Yes. And what did you like the most? My favourite part of your series was the surahs. Oh, mashallah. So all of you guys that were uh, listening to the surahs last time, and those that took part last time, Khadija really liked the surahs. Khadija, do you mind if I ask you to do a surah for us? Well, considering this is our second series of um, Islam, the way of life for Iqra Bangla, why not start with the opening of the Quran and who, none other than my guest, my new guest Khadija will do us the opening surah. Can you do a surah, Fatiha? Okay, Khadija, when you are ready, please look into the camera and begin with A'udhu Billah and then give a surah, Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين آمين ما شاء الله that was amazing do you guys know how much courage it takes as a young seven-year-old to come up and do this? So big, big, big congratulations to Khadija for coming up and being brave enough to do Surah Fatiha. Well done. That was amazing. Kyra, um, I think let's carry on with Surah. I'm going to ask you to do us a Surah as well. Um, just because whatever we do, we always want to start with Quran. And so we're going to start the seventh series. Khadija gave us the opening. Um, one of my favourite short surahs is Surah Quraysh, Li'ila Fi Quraysh. If you can give us Li'ila Fi Quraysh, please, when you're ready, look into the camera and away you go. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف قريش إلافهم رهلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وعامنهم من خوف Sadaqallahu al-Ali al-Azim. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Thank you guys and I hope you guys at home um, are continuing to practice your surahs as well and keep them for the rest of your life. InshaAllah. Um, I want to know a bit more about Khadija and Kaira because they're two sisters here. Um, how many brothers and sisters do you have, um, Khadija? I have one sister and two brothers. And two brothers. And what do you like doing at the weekends when you don't have school? I like playing um, Quran games. Oh wow, you like playing Quran games? That's marvellous. How about yourself, Kyra? Have you got a lot of homework to do? Because you're a bit older now, so... Well, I would normally do my homework on Fridays, but sometimes I don't. And I, I, on Saturdays I go Fora, 
and and on Sundays I'll go to um, tuition uh, and then after that I'll go far as well. MashaAllah. And do you enjoy all of that? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and it's no harm in being honest, yes? It's, we, we all grow up and we all have mm. so much learning to do in our lives. And as Kairos has given such a beautiful example, we've got to do follow, we've got to do tuition and we've got school. But inshallah, as well, we will squeeze in some fun time and brothers and sisters or cousins coming around, that's the fun time we do. Um, and as you guys know, I've, I've, I continue to keep my set of games here with us because I'm going to do some games a little later with uh, Kyra and Khadija, inshallah. Um, we're going to... We're going to see a video on a Quran recitation right now, um, as we do always, and we always start the program. I took this opportunity as my first um, episode for the second series for my guests to do Quran, but now I'm going to let you enjoy some recitation, um, some pre-recorded recitation, inshallah. This is um, the Quran as we've always opened up. I'll see you in a moment. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله that was a beautiful recitation as we always have to start our program right um, we I'm going, I'm going to quickly speak to my guests because um, I want to talk about school for a bit and I know all of you guys have been going to school uh, throughout the year doing some hard work. Um, Sometimes you might find school work is a bit boring, but you hear from other people, ask other people what sort of thing they're studying, and that will keep you enjoying. So I'm going to ask um, Khadija, what are you studying right now in school? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, go on, Khadija, actually. Sorry. I'll get you bottled up, aren't I? Khadija, what are you doing in school at the moment? In what school, topic or subject is it? My topic is Stone Age, and I'm looking through a book called The Stone Age Boy. Wow, Stone Age, and you're doing a book called The Stone Age Boy. Do you want to tell us a bit more about it? Look, look at, tell everybody what happens in The Stone Age Boy. In The Stone Age Boy, there's a Stone Age Boy. His name is Om, mm -hmm. 
and then he goes back in time when he doesn't even realize and he meets he meets a friend and he, he doesn't quite know what the friend's name is because at that time they, they didn't they didn't know how to really speak English. Wow. Imagine you guys at home imagine this story. Imagine that happened in real you were able to go back in time and you were able to um, go and meet somebody at the same area you were in at but seeing that they don't even speak the language anymore. That would be amazing. Khadija, if you had the chance to go back in time, where would you choose to go? When, where um, and why? I would go... Tell us nice and loudly, where would you like to go? I would, I would also go to the Stone Age because I, I want to see like the... Because I remember when I was in year three, I done sto I done Stone Age, uh, I done the, uh, back in the time as well, and I wanted to go like see the stones because I remember those those like stones stacked up, and yeah, I want to I want to see that as well. It's true. It's an interesting time, isn't it? Because there's a back going back in time, they relied on stones a lot and rocks a lot, didn't they? Whereas we now have cement and bricks, isn't it? So it's an interesting time. If you asked me which time would I like to go back to, can you guess when it would be? Mm, maybe Stonehenge as well. I think I'd like to go back in time to when Prophet Muhammad was here. Yes, and inshallah, as time goes by, you guys at home and Kyran Khadija are got, so will learn more and more about the Prophet Sallallahu life and learn how beautiful it is. And I, as, I, as I always say, I have so many books that I like reading. Um, Seal of the Prophet here, I've got the Sealed Nectar. Um, I'm going to quickly jump into where we left off from last time. And I understand that we, we got to the boycott and the exile. So I'm going to read a quick passage from here. And then we're going to talk about it because it's an interesting topic. So the more and more you learn about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more you'll start to love it. And you will probably end up choosing like me, wanting that if you ever had the chance to go back in time, we go back in time to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all of the Sahabas. So I'm going to go straight into the Sira. We're going to talk about the boycott and the exile. And I haven't read this part myself before, so inshallah, we can all share this together. I'll go through the first paragraph. Months passed and the Quraysh were still reeling from the multiple blows they suffered. After the shame of losing a huge portion of the population to self-imposed exile, they lost two of their most prominent figures in Hamza and Omar. Things were going from bad to worse and they had uh, gathered to finally put a stop to it. The only way, that they would, uh, uh, the only way to do would be to kill the Prophet all the tribes agreed that the Banu Hashim, led by Abu Talib, must hand the Prophet over and they would be paid an, an amount of blood money. They even agreed to allow a third party to kill the Prophet to, um, so that there was no revenge attacks. They once again approached Abu Talib, but this time did not give him a choice in the matter. They said to him, either you hand him over or we will cut you off from the Quraysh. In truly an unprecedented move, they threatened to disown the Banu Hashim. Abu Talib was furious and immediately refused. It's a very long chapter, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but I'm going to explain it a bit more. And this is where we've been talking in our last series about how the Quraysh were continuously being difficult to the Prophet ﷺ and to his family and Abu Talib, his uncle. So what happened was this final move from them was to basically say to Abu Talib, hand over your nephew, the Prophet ﷺ, and we will kill him and we will pay you money to hand him over and we will get somebody else to do it so there's nobody that takes revenge on each other. But Abu Talib stands strong and firm and he said, no, I'm not going to hand my nephew over. I'm not going to give my nephew as an animal for you to slaughter. As a result of that, the Quraysh then decided that they will boycott anything to do with, um, with, with, the, with the Banu Hashim, which is the family of the, um, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, in turn, it was the Muslims as well. And so they had to flee to a valley away from, and they had to be there. Some say it was roughly three years where they had to live there on their own, not exchanging food, not exchanging any, um, any, any, any market items or anything like that, and living a very hard life. So that was the boycott that the Quraysh 
did on the Banu Hashim and the Muslims. And it was a very hard time for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, the boycott eventually ended and it was by the miracle of Allah that the boycott would end because when they made the boycott, they had a set of agreements on a piece of plug, a wooden piece of plug, which they wrote down how they were boycott and they left this in the Kaaba. So eventually at the very end, when Abu Talib went to negotiate the end of the boycott, he said to them that your agreement does not exist and the Prophet told him this because it was the miracle of Allah that Allah will send termites, little bugs and beetles to go and eat up this agreement that was on a piece of wood so it doesn't exist anymore. So when Abu Talib went back to the Quraysh and told them that your agreement doesn't stand anymore, they said, what were you talking about? Of course it does. They went into the Kaaba to lo and behold find that the agreement had been removed. And so the boycott came to an end, but the boycott did a lot of damage, unfortunately, to the, to the Muslims, where we know it made Abu Talib very ill, and it made Khadija, the wife of the Prophet, very ill. And we will talk about that part, inshallah, next week, which is known as the Year of Sorrow for the Prophet, وسلم, and what happened to Khadija, and what happened to Abu Talib, inshallah. I'm going to come back over to you guys. Um, did you understand the boycott? Yeah? yeah? Do you guys know what a boycott is? I'm going to ask you, you, you Kyra, as, one, as, as, the, um, as you're in year five now, when you're doing a boycott, what does it mean? Is it that you have, there's certain things you can't do? Um, yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Khadija, do you want to have a go? What do you think a boycott is? Does a boycott mean that you want to get rid of somebody? Not quite. What, when you boycott something, it means that you don't want to do anything with it anymore. You can boycott a person. Okay, I, I would like to boycott Joe Biden, the American president, because he's been very horrid towards the Palestinians. And, and so, as you might have seen, a lot of people are boycotting things that are Israeli, because that's what they choose to do. So that's what a boycott is. And the Quraysh chose to boycott the Banu Hashim, not to talk to them, not to give them food, not to exchange gifts with them. They boycotted them. And that's what a boycott is. So it's amazing that our Prophet ﷺ managed to live a life that included a boycott as well. Something that we do it, we're doing now, as, now as, um, with, with, with food items that we buy. So great. Right. I want to play a few games. Are you guys ready for a game? Yeah. I hope you're ready for some games at home as well. I remember we started last series with Articulate. So I think I'm going to choose Articulate. Do you want... It's not fair. I should let you guys choose. Why should I choose? Um, Khadija, what would you like to play? You've got Quick Link, Quran Challenge, Articulate or double ditto? Which one would you like? Um, I would choose... Maybe that one. Articulate. Okay. Articulate is, is, is what we do. So, remember the rules of the game, you guys at home, because we played this uh, in the first series. Do you know the rules of the game? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Well, I'm going to put a timer on, and I'm going to let you go first, um, Khadija. Kyra, no looking at the answers. I want you to describe every single blue item, and when we get it right, I want you to move that one to the back. Let's see how we can do, how many we can do in one minute, okay? So, guys at home, see if you can join in, see if you can shout out the answers faster than me and Kyra. Um, let's do the blue ones, yeah? The dark blue ones. So, ready? We are going to do this for one minute. In one minute, you've got to describe as many as you can, Khadija. We are starting in three, two, one, go! Okay. This is a place where animals go. A place where animals are, Kyra. A zoo. zoo. Yeah. Very good. Let's have that card. That's one point. Go. This is a place. This is a. This is a capital city of France. Paris. Paris. Very good, Kyra. This is where fishes go. Ocean. Halfway point. Fishes. No. Is it a fish market? Huh? Fish market. No. See. Fish it's, and chip shop? No. No? It's Ocean? somewhere where they display lots of like sea creatures in a, in like a building. Aquarium. Oh, very good description. Well done. Did you know that one? 
Oh, aquarium, guys. Right, we've only got 10 seconds. Go, go, go. It's somewhere where kids go to learn that we were talking School. about. Uh, yeah. It's cool. Very good. And your time is up. Wow. Do you want to pass the cards over to um, oh. Kyra? She's going to have a go. Kyra, I think I'm going to make it really hard for you because you're older. So you're going to do the red ones, okay? Khadija, are you ready? Yeah. All right, Kyra, in five, four, three, two, one, go. You put money in it. Charity jar? It's like a, it's like a um, sadaka jar. No. It's, yeah, you put money in it. You put money in it? Is it a money box? Piggy bank? Piggy bank? It, it starts with a W. It starts ah. with a W, you put the money. <gasps> it's a wallet. Oh, very good. Wallet. Next one. You can cut with it, you can cut paper, you can cut scissors. Shoes. Yeah. Very good. I don't know this one. Um... How should I try to describe it? If you can't do that, let's skip to the next one. It's uh, the... I think it's a two, two word, it has two words in it. Uh, Khadija mentioned it before. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse is from it. It starts with a Oh, D. Disneyland. Yeah. Oh, very good. Disneyland. Oh, we got five seconds. Go, is, go, go. You can eat this with bread. Butter? Um, Peanut butter? Oh, time's up. What was the answer? Sandwich. Sandwich. Oh, Khadija just got it in the end. Well done. Well, that was very close to you two sisters. Do you, know, do you want to know your scores on how you did? Yeah. Kyra managed to successfully describe to us three. Khadija managed to successfully describe to us four. Yes. Khadija won that one. Wow, that was very close. Oh, you guys are going to go home and... Uh, have an argument over it, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I beat you. Not an argument, sorry. A competition. You're going to say, I'll beat you. No, but it's good to have competition at home, guys. And I always say, find, find, find things that you do, can do in common. Find things that you can do with your siblings. And, um, yeah, just enjoy yourselves together when you have the free time. Outside of your photo time, outside of your tuition. Do, do a few, few games at, at home. Um, okay, we, we've got a few more things that I'd like to discuss. I, this is something I wanted to start new this year. I love this book, Ramadan Mubarak, because it's got quick little quotes in it. Um, and what I want to do this year is um, spend the last few minutes picking a quote. I'm just going to flick through, pick one, read it out, and then I'm going to ask um, my guests to tell me what they think of them. So, I have gone randomly to this page. Um, I did see it earlier. Um, I'm just going to read it out. It is, um, this is a quote from the Quran. Quran, second surah, surah Baqarah, verse 152 says, So remember me and I will remember you. That's it. So remember me and I remember you. I'm going to go to you, Kyra, first. I think this What's... means that Allah, Allah has said for us to remember him and he will remember us, like he will reward us. Very good. What, Khadija, do you agree and do you want to add anything to it? I'll add that I think this means if you remember God, Allah, then he will remember you. Then, yeah. Very good. How, tell me ways that you might remember Allah. Like when we, like we, when we've earned something so precious to us or we've, we've done something. We've achieved something. And so Allah's rewarded you, hasn't he? Oh, or in our prayer. Very good. And when your or prayer when is up, that's a way of remembering Allah doing prayer. Khadija? Or when you've maybe, when you've made me done, so, when you've done something good, then you remember him. That's, um, that's a brilliant way, yeah. It's called appreciating Allah, showing gratitude to Allah. Do you guys know what the best phrase is when you're saying, trying to say thank you to Allah? That's when you say Jazakallah to somebody. But what would you say? Try and guess at home, guys. What would you say to appreciate what Allah's given you? Inshallah. Nearly. It's actually the most easiest one. Alhamdulillah. Yeah? Guys at home, when you see something and you think, wow, Allah has given that to me. And it's amazing. Alhamdulillah. Does that make sense? Kyra and Khadija, it's been amazing to have you guys as my first guest in the second series of Islam the way of life by Ikra Bangla. Inshallah. That's all we've got time for. I've 
run out of time. I've tried to cover as much as I can with you, inshallah, but I'm looking forward to the rest of this series. Our WhatsApp and email is running across the bottom, so please do. If you want to join our, um, join our show, give us a call, give us a message, and let us know when you can co- if you're available to join us. And I'll have you as my guest here. Mums and dads at home, hope you've enjoyed. If you want to send me some feedback, inshallah, I look forward to it. I really love the feedback. And um, hopefully very soon we will look at other things that we can do. Maybe we can do a live call in, inshallah. So I'm going to wrap up. That's all I have for this. Um, I hope to see you next, um, next week on our next episode of Islam, the way of life on Ikra Bangla. I'm your host, Abul Hasnad. Until next, uh, next time, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.